biology. So welcome there to this class whereby today I want us to discuss about transport in animals. So with this transport in animals, we see that the main transporting medium in transport in animals is the blood, whereby the blood has very many different components or, uh, okay, they have different components, whereby the first one is the red blood cell, the white blood cell, and the platelets. So in the transport in animals, we also have the heart, which is responsible for pumping the blood to all parts of the body. We also have the blood vessels, whereby this is the region where the blood is contained in. So, in transport in animals, uh, it mainly comprises of two different types of circulatory systems, whereby we have the open circulatory system and we have the closed circulatory system. So, in the open circulatory system, blood flows in the body cavity, uh, which is called the hymosil, while the blood of the located in the open uh, circulatory system is called the hymo, the hymolymph. So there's a very there's a very major difference between uh, the closed circulatory system and the open circulatory system, whereby, whereby we see that the closed circulatory system blood is pumped inside blood vessels, and then there is also a very muscular heart which facilitates the pumping of this blood to all the parts of the body. So briefly, let's look at the differences between the open and the closed circulatory system. Whereby in the open circulatory system, we see that the blood flows in open surfaces, which are called the sinuses. While in the closed circulatory system, blood flows in the blood vessels. So in the open circulatory system, we see that the velocity of blood is very low, while in the open circulatory system, the velocity of blood is very high. So in the open circulatory system, we see that the hymosil is uh, present, while in the closed circulatory system, the hymosil is uh, it's not present, but it's absent. So the open circulatory system, all the internal organs are submerged or uh, they are floating on the blood, while in the uh, closed circulatory system, the organs are not in close contact with the blood. So it's only the capillaries that, uh, that connect the blood to the organs. So in the open circulatory system, we see also that the blood takes a very long time to circulate the body, while in the closed circulatory system, blood takes a very short time to circulate the body. So the organisms in the open circulatory system are not as much active as the ones for the closed circulatory system. So in the closed circulatory system, the organisms are very much active as compared to the open circulatory system. So whereby the blood passes only once in the heart. So this type of circulation is called single circulation. Example, we have the fish, whereby the blood will only pass once on the heart and then to the rest of the body, and then come again, pass once to the heart, and then to the rest of the body. So this type of circulation is called single circulation. So whereby the blood will, part, uh, will pass the heart twice, and then uh, to the rest of the body, this type of circulation is called double circulation. So examples of organisms that undergo double circulation, we have the mammals, we have the amphibians, also, we, have, uh, we also have the reptiles as the example. So the double circulation mainly involves the blood passing the heart uh, twice. So in the heart, we have two types of uh, circulation that are mainly found in the heart. So the first one is the pulmonary circulation, which mainly involves the pulmonary blood vessels. So the first blood vessel pulmonary we have is the pulmonary vein, and then we have the pulmonary artery. So blood from the right side of the heart goes through the pulmonary artery to the lungs, and then from the lungs to the heart, we have uh, the pulmonary vein. So the pulmonary vein is the one responsible for bringing back uh, blood from the lungs to the heart. So the blood is at a very low pressure, which mainly prevents the rupture of, of the capillaries. You should also know that uh, the blood is at very low pressure so as to create enough time for it to be oxidized, that is, in the lungs. So the blood, uh, the blood in the lungs will really flow at a really low pressure so that all the, all the CO2 in the blood will be removed and replaced with oxygen. So let's look at systemic circulation. 
So the first circulation we said was pulmonary circulation involving the blood from the heart and then to the lungs and then back to the heart. So that is pulmonary circulation. So let's look at systemic circulation, which mainly involves the blood from the heart and then to the rest of the body and then back to the heart. So here, blood is at very high pressure for efficient organ functioning and tissue fluid formation. As maybe you can remember, we say that the pulmonary circulation blood is at very low pressure so that it can be oxidized and CO2 removed. So in systemic circulation, blood is at very high pressure for tissue fluid formation and proper organ functioning. So uh, as this happens, uh, the high pressure of the blood in systemic circulation, it mainly, it mainly activates a chemical process and it also, it also leads to high temperatures of the mammals in short. So let's look at the open circulatory system now in depth. So here the transporting fluid, as we said, is the hemolymph. that's the transporting fluid. So the transporting fluid is found in the body cavity, which is called the hemocyl. So in open circulatory system, we don't have any blood vessels. So the open circulatory, circulatory system is mainly found in organisms like we have the mollusks and we have the organisms in Philam arthropoda. So let's look at the advantages of the open circulatory system. So the first advantage is that the transporting fluid is in direct contact with the cells of the body. Also, it allows mixing of uh, fluid in an organism. So the fluid of this side will easily mix with the fluid on this other side. So it, it also requires less energy to function as compared to the heart, which must require a lot of energy to function. So the blood pressure here is also relatively low, uh, meaning that it does require uh, less amount of energy. So the oxygen requirement for these organisms is also very low. So on limited supply of oxygen, most of these organisms will survive uh, very well. So what are the disadvantages of the open circulatory system? So the first disadvantage is that the waste removal is very slow. And again, most of these animals are less active. So the nutrients are also distributed very slowly inside, the, inside these organisms, and then the blood flow cannot be regulated. So if the organism is undertaking strenuous activity or when they are undertake, uh, undertaking a very light activity, so the blood flow is always the same. So let's look at the advantages of the closed circulatory system. There is a rapid nutrient distribution within the organism, and also there is a high pressure in the blood flow. Also not to forget, the organisms are more active as compared, to the, uh, as compared to the organisms of the open circulatory system. And then the waste removal, uh, the waste removal in these organisms is very, is very rapid. So the blood is also not in contact with the cell, hence there is no interference with the cellular activities. So the blood flows this side, and then the tissues are found on this side. So this, uh, the cells on the blood vessels are at liberty to continue to carry out their processes as they wish. So what are the disadvantages of the closed circulatory system? So the first one is that they require a lot of energy. So the closed re circulatory requires a lot of energy. So it also requires a very strong heart to function. So the pressure created by the heart also may rupture the blood vessel at the, as the next point. So the heart may also be prone to very, uh, very many diseases, like for example, uh, the one created by hypertension, also there is heart attack. So the cells, the cells or the circulatory system in short may also be infected by different diseases or the pathogens. So let's meet on the next class as we now continue to discuss on the mammalian circulatory system. Biology.